Today we're going to learn about ancient Egypt. We have two daily objectives. Number one, define the term empire. And number two, compare civilizations in Mesopotamia with civilization in Egypt. So we've talked about the Big Bang, how the first civilizations were created. We talked about the Paleolithic era uh, and how hunters and gatherers, uh, they survive by hunting wild animals and gathering food. We talked about some of their key innovations. We talked about the Neolithic Revolution in Mesopotamia and how agriculture leads to permanent settlements, um, ultimately permanent property, trade, writing, complex government, religion, law, and organized warfare. Basically how the Neolithic Revolution as a result of agriculture created an entirely new way of life. We talked about the eight different places where agriculture popped up on its own. And finally, we, we did an investigation uh, where we discussed whether agriculture and the Neolithic Revolution was actually a good or a bad thing for human society. So today we're going to talk about Egypt. We're going to talk about Egypt. So Egyptian civilization starts along the Nile River. The Nile River is 4,100 miles long. It is the longest river in the world. It actually flows from here to here. So this is considered Lower Egypt and this is considered Upper Egypt because the river is flowing this way. It actually flows into the Mediterranean Sea. So Upper and Lower Egypt are united in 3000 BCE. And the great thing about Egypt is that it's surrounded by deserts. So we have desert over here, we have desert over here, over here we have the Middle East, over here we have the Mediterranean Sea. So it's a pretty peaceful place, honestly. Um, unlike Mesopotamia, where everybody's at war constantly, Egypt is fairly peaceful because it's surrounded by deserts and nobody lives there. Um, the river, so the Nile River, floods in July of every year. Um, when those waters recede, it, li it leaves a nutrient-rich soil called silt. And it is in the, in the silt on the banks of the river where farmers plant their crops. So over here on the left, we have a picture of one of the pyramids as well as the Sphinx. These were made by the ancient Egyptians. Over here, we have the Nile River. The great thing about this picture is we can see the river. We can see all this green, lush vegetation. This is where we're going to be planting our crops. And then we've got desert right beside it. So, I mean, that's it's, it's very stark comparison. And, it's, and this happens because of the nutrient-rich soil of the Nile River. This is a great picture because we can actually see this black right here is actually the silt that has been washed up on the shore. We're going to see another picture of that in just a second. We can see how cities have developed along the Nile River. We can see how green and lush it is. This is a better picture of the silt, this dark, black, rich soil. This is the silt that's been created from the flooding of the Nile. So this is a picture of the capital of ancient Egypt, which was called Memphis. You're going to notice that it looks a lot like Ur, the Mesopotamian city of Ur. So if we look at Egypt here, Egypt is really just what's along the river. It's not really like what we think of in a normal country shape. Um, we have Lower Egypt. We have Upper Egypt. Memphis is right here. Um, Memphis is located right where the Nile splits and then goes into the Mediterranean on purpose because they're trying to control everything that's going down the Nile. Um, if we look at Memphis more closely, it look, again, it looks a lot like what Mesopotamia looked like. We have our farming out here. We have the normal people that live out here, surrounded by a wall. And then we have walls surrounding the important people, the governmental complexes. So in Egypt, the government is also the religion. So the head priest is also the king or pharaoh. Um, this is known as a theocracy. So Pharaoh is God. This is a theocracy. So in ancient Egypt, government equals religion. So in ancient Egypt, ancient Egypt is going to last 31 different dynasties. And we've talked about the word dynasty. It's when a king passes down political power to his eldest son or daughter. And ancient Egypt is going to last actually 2,600 years. It's not going to formally end until it is conquered by Rome. Uh, Egypt is still a country. Uh, Egypt has been around a really long time, just like China, which we'll talk about later. Uh, it has a very complex government with a formal bureaucracy, bureaucracy, so we have people that are trained to keep records. We have people serving the kings and queens. Um, and once again, it is a theocracy. It is also a polytheistic religion. Remember, that means they have many gods and goddesses. Pharaoh or king being one of the most important. Um, this is the Egyptian god Horus. Horus takes a lot of shapes. This is one of his shapes as a bird. He is also known as the defender of the pharaoh. Um, so not only is pharaoh God, but he has gods and goddesses working for him. 
Uh, so once again, government equals religion. In Egypt, the pharaoh is a god, and this is known as a theocracy. Let's talk about Egyptian society. So again, very similar to Mesopotamian society. We have the king or the pharaoh at the top. We have the priests and the nobles underneath pharaoh. We have traders, artisans. Remember, that's like blacksmiths. Shopkeepers and scribes underneath them. Underneath them, we have farmers and herders. And under them, we have unskilled workers as well as slaves. So the nice thing about Egypt is that people could actually change their social status based on, on their ability. So if they could learn to read and write, they could actually move up. So you might be a farmer or a herder, but if you spend money to have your child learn how to read and write, maybe they become a scribe. And maybe their children becomes priests. So you could actually move up and move down in ancient Egypt, which is kind of cool. Um, slaves generally either serve wealthy families or they mined gold in Upper Egypt where there are gold mines. There's not a lot of slaves, but there are slaves in ancient Egypt. And then the other thing is, is that women could actually own and trade property. They could seek their own marriages and they could even divorce if they were unhappy. So women have a lot of rights in Egyptian society that most societies do not have for women. Hieroglyphics is the writing of ancient Egypt. So remember we had cuneiform in Mesopotamia. In ancient, e in ancient Egypt we have hieroglyphics. Um, hieroglyphic is like a little image or picture that stands for a word or letter. And here is a loose translation of different symbols that stand for Phoenician or English letters. Um, these are originally written on stone and clay like in, Mes in Mesopotamia. But eventually Egyptians are going to create what is called papyrus, uh, which is kind of like the first paper. The, read, it's, the reason it's called papyrus is because it's made from papyrus reeds that are found along the Nile River, so little plants. So papyrus is just the first paper. Here's some pictures of Egyptian art. So over here on the left, we see some hieroglyphics as well as some pictures of some people. Over on the right, same thing. Notice that Egyptian, look, notice what the color of the people. So here, Egyptians are kind of reddish or tannish. Here we have more black looking Egyptians. Um, Egyptians are going to be both. They are both Middle Eastern looking, so they're tan, but they're also black or African looking. Realize that Egypt is in Africa. It's technically in North Africa, but it is in Africa. So you have people from the Middle East and Africa kind of mixing and mingling. Some of the dynasties are going to be more Middle Eastern in look. Some are going to be more African in look. It just kind of depends. But how do we know what ancient Egyptians look like? Because we have art of what they look like. How does this art survive? This art is actually inside the pyramids. So it's been protected. The paint and the colors have been protected over thousands of years, which is really cool. Here's a great painting of war. So just like Mesopotamia, Egyptians are going to be using chariots. How do they use chariots? This is a great painting that shows us how they use chariots. They use them to move guys really quickly with bows. So this guy is on a chariot. His chariot is moving around, and he's shooting bows at his enemies very, very quickly. This weird dog thing is kind of cool. Um, the only thing that's weird about this painting, and notice how he has the reins of the horse attached to his belly. I don't know if that would work. Um, my guess is the way the ancient chariots in Egypt were used, you had one guy actually controlling the horse and another guy standing on the back shooting arrows. That makes sense. Um but maybe not. Kind of one of the weird things about chariots is no one actually knows how they worked and how they, they, were, they, used, they were used in war. Um, but I do think this painting gives us some ideas and some evidence of how they might have been used. Let's take a second to talk about Egyptian architecture. So we've already looked at the pyramid and the sphinx. Notice how sophisticated the sphinx is. It actually used to be a lot more sophisticated, but sandstorms as well as rain have weathered away the sphinx as well as the pyramids. Um, but just think about how large the Sphinx is, how large the pyramids are. It took a lot of time, energy, effort, and mathematics to build these. So these are very, very advanced um, architectural designs and very, very advanced um, buildings. Over here on the right, we actually have something a little bit different. This is an um, ancient Egyptian building where um, it's kind of like a vacation home for the pharaohs. Notice these awesome columns. So this is going to be the first place that the column is invented, not in ancient Greece. It's actually invented in Egypt first. The Greeks are going to steal it from them. Um, and again, you can see these awesome pictures on the sides with hieroglyphics, which are really cool. So very, very advanced architectural design. Let's talk about scientific innovation. So the Egyptians are the first people to create 
a calendar of 365 days broken into 12 months of 30 days each. So this calendar is very, very, very close to our calendar, which is scientifically accurate. We've already talked about the stone columns. They're also going to come up with medical innovations like surgery and repairing broken bones. And they're also going to create the first medicines that help reduce fever, not like what we think of it nowadays, like pills, but like plants, like you should take this plant if you have a fever, or you should pound this pound this this plant up and make a soup out of it or a, or like a like a tea out of it and drink it and that'll help you with a headache, that kind of thing. Take a few minutes and answer your two daily objectives.